Our video today is going to take us through the easier part of graphing. Uh, what we're looking for is going to be uh, y-intercepts mostly. We'll get to x-intercepts later. So let's take on the easy part. So for what we're doing is we're going to be graphing lines using our slope-intercept form. So we want to make sure that all of our lines equations are going to be in this form as we do this. So if they get to be standard form, we want to make sure that we're going to change them back into slope intercept. Um, if we have been given a slope and a point, that's good as well because we can graph that from there and we'll go through those examples. The nice thing about this is we have no more function tables. We do not have to figure out what x is or what y is and or choose for x and find y. So those are that's kind of a nice feature, uh, less work. The other thing is we have to be very careful uh, in regards to fractions in the B spot. Fractions are a little bit trickier to graph uh, when you get into uh, this type of situation. So when we look at this, a couple things that we're going to talk about before we actually get into the graphing part is one of the things that you're going to see is something that looks like this. Um, what we say it is a, this is what's called a function of x. And what this really is is the same as y. So the function of x gives us what y is once we do that. So when, we, when you see this, uh, what we want to do is we want to think about it as just being our y. Uh, that's it. Um, the other thing is when we start graphing with slope, if we're given a whole number, we want to make sure that if I give you an example, uh, let's say let's say our slope comes out to be 2. Um, what we want to think about is we want to think of it as 2 over 1. Um, and the reason is is we need our rise over the run for this. And if we're just given a whole number, we're not given the run, or we don't think of the run, but the run is actually going to be 1. So anytime you have a whole number, the run is always going to be 1 for that. Uh, the last thing is with negatives, um, you get to choose where you want to put the, um, the negative sign. So if you're given a slope, let's say, of 2 over 3, your answer is always going to have the negative in the middle. What that's going to do is you can have a choice of saying two, uh, negative 2 over 3, or we can say 2 over negative 3. Uh, the biggest thing is this tells us uh, direction. So a negative is, if it's in this part, this is our rise. So if it's negative, we're going to go down. If it's in the bottom denominator section, that's our run, and negative would be left. So that's the only thing that we have to kind of keep in mind as we go through these examples today uh, for what we're doing. So here's our first example. So one of the things that you want to do is you want to pull out the information that you already know, because it is already in y equals mx plus b form. So we want to find our slope. And we want to find our b, but our b is going to be as an ordered pair. So we're always going to have 0 in for x. Our b is just this, because if I do put 0 in here, all I'm left with is 4. So that means there. My slope, it's the coefficient in front of the x. In this case, there is none, but there actually is. So it's 1, but the way we want to think of it is, is 1 over 1. So once you've identified the two parts of your graph, now we can graph it. So now we can go from and look at B. So the first thing that we're going to look at is putting our B in. So B is 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're going to put our B here. And then we're going to work our slope off of this point. And our slope is positive 1 over positive 1. So to help you out, what may work for you is in the if I have, I'll write it differently, 1 over 1. This is positive, it's our rise, so we're going to go up, and then our run is positive, so we're going to go to the right. So when we do this, we can go up one, over one. Up one, over one. And I can continue this all the way through the graph. 
The other thing I can do is I can, if I bring this down here, I can say that I have the complete opposite of this. And I'm going to say a negative 1 over negative 1 because if I reduce my signs, it's going to be negative over negative, which is a positive. So now I can go, I can go down 1 over 1. Down 1 over 1. And then there's my line as I look at it. So uh, when you do your line, uh, what you want to make sure that you're doing is uh, connecting all the dots as you go through it and then you want to make sure that you're putting arrows at the end okay so there's your first graphing no function tables just using the B and finding the slope so if they give you a line that says give me a I'm given a point and I'm given slope so here's my M well, here is a point. It's not necessarily my B, but it's a point on the graph. So I'm going to graph this first, and then I'm going to do my work my slope off of here. But again, when I look at this, I have negative 5, but I also have it negative 5 over 1. Because again, I need my rise over my run. So this tells me my negative 5, my rise is going to go down, and my positive is my run, so I'm going to go right. So this little part over here kind of helps you in organizing what you're doing. So I have one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And then I have, I will work my slope off of this. So I'm going to go down negative five. So one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to go right one. And that's where my next point goes. So again, when I'm working this, I only need two points for the line. And again, I want to make sure I put my arrows for that. So again, our equation's already written in there. Here's our slope. Here's our B. Again, 2 over 1 we want to think of it for our slope. Our B is an ordered pair now of 0, 6. So I'm going to go over to the graph. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Put that up there. And then I'm going to work my slope. 1, 2, 1, and again, I can go the opposite direction, 1, 2, 1. And that again gives me um, my line here. Oops. Put that little line there. And my arrows. So there's my graph. So again, I'm working off my point first and then my slope second. Here it's already a fraction, so I can see my rise over my run. So I'm going to go a positive 1, down negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I'm going to work off my rise, which is going to be up and to the right. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. And there's my line. Find my line. Go. And again with my arrows. So a little quicker, less work, not much to take on. So here we go, and we see our f of x. Again, this just means y. So here I would put my 1 over under my 2. This is my slope. This is my y-intercept. Again, this is 0, and then we'd have 4. So again, 1, 2, 3, 4. I have a negative 2, so I go down 1, 2, and I have a positive 1, gives me right. So there's my two points that I need. Give me my graph. Here it's not, it's in standard form, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move my 2x over, reorganize. Again, I'm going to think of this as being this. So I have, again, 1, 2, 3, 4 for my y-intercept, which is b. I've got a negative 2 and a positive 1 for my slope. So again, these are as quick as, really, as quick as you can for this. So even if I have to reorganize it. So I have a negative 2 again, negative 2x here. 
kick the two over. Be careful with this one because you do have a negative in front of your y, so you're going to have to divide everything by a negative, which basically changes the sign. So we go to positive, negative. So again, here's my slope, put it over 1, work it off there, but I'm going to start with my b, which is negative 2. I have a positive slope, so I'm going to go up 1, 2, over 1, and there gets my line. So again, I'm going to reorganize here, 7, negative 7x, seven negative 7x, seven kick my 21 over. I'm left with a negative 3y equals a negative 7x minus 21. I'm going to divide all the terms by a negative 3, and this is why we took the time in that section to do all that. So this goes here, goes all to 1, which is what we want. I have a positive 7 over 3x. And now I have a positive 7. So here's my slope. Here's my y-intercept. So again, I'm going to go up 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm going to go, I can go up 3. 1, 2, 3. And I can go over 7. 1, 2, 3, 6, 7. I can also go down 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. To put me over here left. And sometimes you have to go in the opposite direction on your graph if you run out of room, which is fine. So that's why you can do the opposite. So that's it. There's your keys. Take your time. Make sure you find all the stuff. You're going to work off of your B first and then work your slope for that.